Uh, welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. It is the 3rd of September, 2013, 2014. Whoops. There you go. I was making sure it was working, and it is, isn't it? Okay, sorry about that. Um, so we have with us tonight Jeremy Dean. Um, Jeremy is the Education Director. Um, I've seen other words used. Um, czar, I think, somewhere, Jeremy. <laughs> of um, of uh, Rap Genius, um, but Education Genius. He's the Education Director um, at Genius, um, and he'll explain why I'm using both words here in just a second. Paul O just last week introduced me by email, and and uh, Paul, I don't let things sit. So, <laughs> you're right. Um, it was uh, maybe Paul. You can uh, start by saying how you met Jeremy, and then we'll get into it a little bit here. Um, we're going to learn about uh, students annotating uh, using Rap Genius uh, in a kind of different way than uh, they may have used before. Um, and um, collaborat collaborating uh, through texts and uh, social reading and so forth tonight. Paul O from the uh, National Writing Project. Why'd you send me Jeremy along? <laughs> yeah, so clearly this was a uh, uh, one of those fortuitous moments where I thought to myself, Jeremy and Paul Allison should uh, get to know each other. Uh, so I first got to know Jeremy, uh, and I feel really fortunate um, in getting a chance to meet Jeremy uh, through a former student of Jeremy's, Louis Lefaire, who is a national student poet through the Scholastic uh, Writing, Young writing, Writers and Artists Award. I, I always mess up that name. Um, and part of a national program to name a group of student poets each year. Um, and so Lewis actually came to my attention through our Educator Innovator portal, uh, which some of you may be familiar with. It's educatorinnovator.org. Uh, right now the site is down, so uh, don't necessarily flock there, but uh, it should be up soon. And um, Lewis and I began talking about the possibility of a webinar based on his poetry work. Uh, he is a, a poet himself and has essentially, as I understand it, been on a um, on a sort of goodwill ambassadorial kind of tour in which he has spoken to various groups, met other poets, um, engaged in active conversation about poetry, and he is also very entrepreneurial. Jeremy could actually speak more about Lewis. They're they're friends, um, and Lewis is also, as I said, a former student. Um, but uh, Lewis is also very entrepreneurial, and he started a website called Poetry 2.0. And Lewis, uh, his his idea for this webinar, which I highly recommend, it's I think it's a really amazing conversation, uh, was about the what he argued is the changing nature of poetry, uh, given um, media today and the ways in which we are able to compose and interact uh, and experience uh, poetry. And uh, he invited as guests onto this webinar um, Jeremy, his former teacher, who was, uh, he mentioned to me, is the director of a site called Genius. And so I checked out Genius at that moment. Um, but as well, uh, a professor of poetry at Harvard, um, Lisa New, I believe is her name. Jeremy can correct me if I'm wrong because he's also right. friends with her. Uh, yes. And um, the amazing spoken word poet Sarah Kay as well. So they were all guests on this webinar. And they had an amazing and lively conversation, uh, of which I was essentially the ignorant uh, questioner. Um, and I played that role perfectly, let me just say, um, in which they talked about just this very nature of, of uh, uh, I mean, I think they got to the point of you know, asking, you know, what is poetry, and is it different today, given the ways in which we can experience it, or is it not? Um, and. Uh, that I, I think that's really um, being reductionist with regard to the conversation. As I said, it was brilliant and, and far-ranging. But as a result of that conversation, Jeremy, who I believe is also a poet, um, he and I made a plan to touch base and learn more about genius uh, because uh, I, I thought that I actually did not have you in mind, Paul Allison, believe it or not. I don't yes. always think about you. That's good. Isn't that surprising? What I had in mind was, was actually our Oakland work. And this is work that Joe um, Padeso. I think Joe's did. trying to join us too. But go ahead. Yeah, exactly. So, so that <laughs> was speak of Joe. Yeah. So actually, when I met Jeremy and heard about his work, I thought about our work in Oakland because um, 
not only is there lit genius, as you know, Paul, in which, and, and that was so, some of what I think Jeremy focused on during the webinar, uh, but, but he also mentioned things like history genius and news genius. So this notion of being able to annotate primary source documents seemed incredibly powerful, and not just uh, with regard to the annotation, but this idea that you could add your voice to a text and then engage in conversation with others through the text itself by annotating, by then commenting on annotations. Uh, this notion of the text being the focal point of a social network and a conversation is, is exactly, uh, well, I would say uh, is, it hits the sweet spot of what we're trying to do with educating for democracy in the digital age, which is to give uh, young people the tools to be able to engage in these kinds of civic and civil and constructive conversations. Um, but actually, as I was showing the site to some of the other people in the Educating for Democracy and Digital Age project, uh, you know, they remarked that um, they're, they're, I, think, I think because of the roots of, of the site in Rap Genius, there's something about the site that also presents itself as being very much of the moment. So you could be looking at a primary source historical document, but you're using these tools of today and as well, you know, you see side by side these historical documents, you know, rap lyrics. Um, so the ability for young people to engage in ways um, and with the media uh, that resonate with them alongside, you know, perhaps more academic pursuits, right. I think create, creates this really interesting environment. Okay, so that's, so, so that's my long story. No, no I, I, and part of why I like the long story is we, we you know, we mentioned what connect, we, we talk about connected uh, learning all the time. But it's really good to hear, you know, how all the connections you make to Paul. So that's super. Um, Joe Paraisio is with us as well from Oakland, and you're what in your second week or so in school? Yeah, this is week two. Week two. <laughs> okay. And um, Sam Reed, uh, totally appropriate given your work with uh, boys right now, and and other kinds of work you do in Philadelphia, but you're also starting or st helping to start a new school in Philadelphia. So yeah. uh, welcome to the show as well. Cool. Did, did you know about? Do you, have you used or folks you know use Rap Genius already, um, Sam or? No, no. I just got yeah. introduced. I right. just got introduced to it, um, and I was playing around with it and. Uh, interestingly, I'm going to be leading um, a space at at the U School called the Highlight Lab, and it's real media centric uh, as well, like accessing media, analyzing media, as well as creating media. And I think this is like a perfect site that uh, can have kids do like close reading of uh, all different types of text, right? So this is really exciting. Right. So Jeremy, there we go. Is that a good enough introduction? Yeah, that's great. <laughs> Here. Yeah, and, and part of what um, you can keep talking here, um, part of my question and, and funny way of saying it is it's such a cool tool, right? Um, can we use it in school that doesn't kill it? But, uh, you know, we'll, we'll figure that out. <laughs> anyway, so Jeremy, I, tell a little bit about Rap Genius and where that came from, if you don't mind starting there, uh, for those of us who don't know. And then your story is great. I love, I love your story about how you're a teacher who hacked the site and now you got a different kind of life so <laughs> take over introduce yourself here sure, why don't I go ahead and switch to a uh, screen share then um, real quick just to okay. run through a few images on the site um, can you guys see that okay should I uh, make it larger it's good yeah I got it okay. up. I, yeah, yeah. all right great um, I just in the chat on the TTT uh, site uh, I I offered a link for sign up for the site and an, and an email address that you can send your account name to um, to get elevated privileges on the site. Uh, one of the things I did when, when I came on at, at, at Rap Genius, then Rap Genius, was to create special accounts for educators that give them special privileges to do some things using the site's tools um, that are kind of in, important for classroom work. Um, but I'll try to touch on uh, what, what Paul asked me to, and I think. Uh, uh, what Paul Allison asked me to, but also uh, Sam, your project and, and everything you mentioned, Paul. I, I want uh, Paulo. I want to respond to that and and, and get engaged in, in what your guys' needs are and how this site can be helpful. Um, and and I, I just want to encourage everybody to interrupt you at any point. Yes, please do. <laughs> uh, and I'm going to be brief. I'm just going to cycle through some things. I want to take the opportunity though to 
go back to my teaching days because I I'm trained as a teacher. I'm an, I'm an English educator by training, um, and do something I used to do at the beginning of every semester, um, which is share this poem by by Billy Collins, Marginalia. Um, I used to always pull it out at the beginning of the term as an invocation for students to to write in the margins of their texts um, and how important how important I thought that was for for critical understanding and for beginning uh, to, to you know develop one's own idea about texts um, and I was always a, a, a marginal writer myself an annotator um, and I always loved the idea that Billy Collins gets at here about um, you know other people that have been inside these books and uh, the margin you know the marginal notes that they've left and uh, you know, imagining them and imagining their interactions with the text, and and what genius the platform allows us to do is to have those conversations, um, to annotate as we do in in paperback books or in, in on paper, but also to do that in conversation with others in a collaborative, networked way that is really, really quite powerful, um, and that's what lit genius is for 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 literary text. It's a it's a community of readers. Um, they're reading together. This is literally happening. It's a kind of educational note outside of the classroom. Um, every day we choose a text, and the kind of the English nerds, the rogue scholars, um, come to the site and and collaboratively annotate uh, great works of literature. Um, we have scholars annotating, as you can see from the front page here. There's actually a Chaucer scholar working on the site right now. Um, you know, every day we choose a different text. Recently it was this Percy Shelley poem, and there are these annotations. People having conversations about the lines and what they mean, um, and bringing the text to life through images and links and text. Um, but as you said, Paul, uh, this all started with Rap Genius, and that's how I discovered the site. Um, I literally, you know, had students telling me because I was always bringing in hip hop lyrics to my classrooms. Hey, you got to check out this site, Mr. Dean. Uh, it's really cool. I think it's right up your alley. And they were just absolutely right when I when I went to it. I found all my favorite hip hop from the 90s was there and not very well annotated. So I totally lost a lot of time on a dissertation I was working on uh, at the time um, on African American literature, just nerding out on the site, nerding out on my favorite hip hop, going to something like this Thieves in the Night uh, song by Black Star and tracing it back to the to source text, which is a Toni Morrison uh, novel, The Bluest Eye. Um, and eventually I just realized that I should be adding uh, all my syllabus, anything I can find, to the site. And any user can add a text to the site, cutting and pasting in this box right here. And so I added everything I was teaching at the time, like, uh, like the Toni Morrison novel and poems, essays, songs as well that weren't on the site, um, The Great Gatsby, the entirety of The Great Gatsby and had my students collaboratively annotate as an assignment. Basically, you know, I, I was always the kind of teacher that was trying to use blogs, wikis, and when I found this, it just made so much more sense to me than other digital tools, because annotation, as, as Billy Collins' poem points out, is an age-old learning practice, and this is just updating that learning practice for the 21st century, and so one thing I'm really proud of is that we added this text, you know, a group of 70 in three sections, English students and I added this text of the Great Gatsby. And now it's the most popular literary text on Genius. You can see over here that it's got 400,000, over 400,000 views. In fact, there's six people looking at it right now. And 132 people have contributed to it over time. And we added this. If I click on this contributors, you can see that I'm the one that added it. And you can see here a list of the top scholars. Everybody on the site is considered a scholar. Every student, Every random expert that descends and offers knowledge uh, is considered a scholar. But these are students of mine. This is Alyssa. This is Nathan. This is Morgan. These are students of mine that contributed to the beginning of this, you know, one of the most interesting places, if not the most interesting place to experience the Great Gatsby online. Uh, how, they're the how, ones. how long ago was this? This, this was uh, fall of uh, 2012. Uh, okay. Cool. So yeah. So this has been up for a year and a half, I guess, uh, um, or almost two years two now. Years. <laughs> yeah. So can, um, can I ask? Can I ask you the the, the touchy question yeah. already? Because I did hear you say the entire text, um, and I think I also saw some indications that you don't want to put the entire text. So, so right. What, what's the copyright stuff around all that? 
Well, you know, we're working with publishers now. You know, we're in high-level talks with a lot of publishers about this platform. I think, you know, publishers have already recognized it as a really wonderful place for readers to engage text and engage each other and engage authors. Uh, you know, Juno Diaz annotated, Pulitzer Prize winning author Juno Diaz annotated a portion of uh, Brief Wondrous Life of Oscar Wow. Um, so we are getting permissioned content from publishers, um, mm -hmm. but it is true that a large part of what is up um, is public realm stuff. So, um, you know, the, we scraped a lot of the Gutenberg project and have, you know, almost anything you can name pre-1923, everything by Dickens, Jane Austen, Shakespeare, people like that, in their entirety up. But with copyrighted content, we, t we are trying to... Well, we're losing your permission. Sound. So, for example, sorry, can you hear me now? Yeah, that's good. Uh, in the case of something like the bluest, we have excerpted content up. We don't have, um, and we're not going to add a novel, uh, you know, like the Kite Runner or something like that. Um, we wouldn't be able to get permission to do that. We're going to probably just do an excerpt uh, or something like that. So. Mm -hmm. So what, um, quick, quick, quick question, what about folks that are um, like creating stuff, like you vet what they put out there or like I go download something like, or a kid downloads something that they don't have permission? Uh, yeah, if, if you know, we, we respond to the right, you know, violation notices, we don't get a lot of them. But if anybody whose art is on the site, you know, against their will and, and finds it there, we respond immediately and, and to take down notices. Um, it generally doesn't happen too often. Um, the most frequent circumstance in which it happens is with images. Um, because images are very easy to add to the site in annotations. So I might be writing an annotation on a hip-hop song or writing an annotation on Gatsby and Google in search something that I think I'm in I might or I might be from a particular artist um, and that artist can you know, discover that and ask us to take it down so yes, that, that works for me and and then I mean this is being stuff is licensed. Yeah, I, I, we got most of that, Jeremy. There was a little in and out for some reason, but um, I, that works for me. That that sort of uh, I don't know what's, but I mean, and, and I think some of it could be argued to be fair use too, because of how radically it changes the the nature and the purpose. Of, you know, it becomes the purpose becomes conversation, and anyway. I'm good with that. We, we can move on from that question. I don't want to get stuck on it. I'll just throw it out there right away. Yeah, go ahead. Um, yeah, I was just going to, you know, uh, that, that was sort of the end of my talk. I was just going to sort of say, uh, you know, we have a space online, um, you know, an education, you know, uh, home for teachers, uh, uh, Education Genius here, um, that has some resources that are super helpful, like, I said there are these special accounts. Um, we have a teacher's guide to genius, glossaries and things like that, lots of different kinds of educational resources, uh, a forum for educators in which they're talking about things and educating. Um, and so we're trying to build a home for educators on the site um, where of all disciplines, you know, both within English and language arts but also history, people that are using music uh, history or music criticism, uh, as well as science, really any any text that requires close reading. You know, my wife is a biologist, and she's had students annotating, uh, college students annotating, uh, you know, research articles collaboratively as a way to get into that kind of dense language of academic scientific writing. Um, and we think all this dovetails really nicely with uh, the you know the requirements of the Common Core for close reading of complex texts. We have this the standards up on the site. Uh, annotated or, you know, in the process of being annotated, but obviously we have a lot of the exemplar texts that are out of copyright um, on the site uh, and also exemplar texts excerpted um, on the site as well. So I think it's a great home for 
teachers uh, looking to implement the Common Core and specifically the practice of close reading, which uh, inside or outside the Common Core, I think, I think is the essence of, um, of at least the English language arts curriculum and really a vital skill, not just in the schools, but, you know, for, for democratic, civic engaged life in general. Um, you know, close reading hip hop lyrics, close reading uh, the law, <laughs> close reading stories. Uh, it all pertains to a kind of civic engagement going back to some of the stuff Paul O was saying um, in a digital world. So I'll stop there and just uh, we can talk about all the stuff. I can hear about your guys' project and uh, go from there. Yeah. I, I, going back to Sam's question just for a second, Sam, I, th you, I think you were also asking like who can upload stuff, right? And anybody can, is, I think. Like, if I wanted to write my own poem, lyric, story, I can put that up there, right? That's absolutely right. Um, we could mm -hmm. add a transcript of this conversation and annotate it. Um, we could then embed it on your various sites at the, at the Writing Project or through the TTT site. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it, it's all... The idea here is that, you know, when Jay-Z drops a new track, we want the, the fans to be able to transcribe it immediately and get it up. Um, and that, you know... Uh, Ease with which or it is. Or when Sam Reed does, right? I mean, sorry. What's that? <laughs> or when Sam Reed does. <laughs> yeah, but go ahead. There, yeah. Yeah. But you can add your own poem. You know, this is a great platform, I think, for young writers or up and coming artists to share their work mm -hmm. uh, in a really dynamic way and invite other people um, to see it and to engage with it in this cool way. You absolutely can add your own poetry. Um, you can excerpt an article from the New York Times over the, over the weekend. Uh, and added to the site because it you know can, relates to your discussion of Ferguson or whatever it is an opinion article and have your students break it down rhetorically um, so you have a, you know a, a real it's really easy to add stuff to the site and immediately engage it hey you know what um, Paul I, I need to get going soon um, mm -hmm. just because I have to give a bath to my uh, <laughs> soon to be one year old can we so do all apologize. the rest of that sentence come on no, I, I know so I apologize you know and and actually um, I should probably just walk you guys downstairs so that you can see how cute he is while he's taking a bath. <laughs> but instead of doing that, I will just say a couple of things. I'm not going to annotate the bath. Go ahead. Know, exactly. <laughs> if, if, if I could just say a couple of things that I think um, you know, emerged out of my conversation with Jeremy and actually mm -hmm. in talking to some of the other people involved in our Educating for Democracy and Digital Age project. Um, one is that Jeremy, uh, first of all, has, has been incredibly gracious in terms of his time, and I, and I think we should take advantage of him. <laughs> um, uh, second, I would say that um, Jeremy has, uh, well, I talked to Jeremy about this notion of, of uh, you know, it, I'm, there, it doesn't seem like anywhere there is uh, a need to pay, to pay at the site. You know? So it seems like this incredibly free and open resource that almost has a, um, like a, you know, sort of a Wikipedia feel to it in the sense that, uh, you know, it's a it's a knowledge creation space, and and that unlike Wikipedia, though, what's transparent is is everyone's um, contributions to the building of that knowledge. Uh, so I think that's really interesting. And then the last thing I was going to say is, from a from a civics um, standpoint, and from our digital civics project, which I know I've come on and talked about a bunch, and and Joe I know has has talked about that as well. Um, one thing that occurs to me, and as I was looking through this site, well, so first of all, when Jeremy was showing me the site, he was showing me the history um, genius portion, and we were looking at an annotation of an I have uh, of Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech, you know, which, as you can imagine, has extensive annotations, and I think would be really fascinating for kids to see. But actually, juxtaposed against that on the same site is the ability to look at news genius and see, like for instance, what's going on in Ferguson. And the ability to annotate what's going on in Ferguson um, against what it is that you see in you know, some of the history pieces, I think is completely fascinating. And I think, uh, you know, when I looked at the Ferguson annotations, I think there's, there's huge room, particularly with the news pieces, but I think with the history pieces as well. I know this is true for Lit Genius, you know, in terms of uh, opinion, but I think it, there's huge room in the news genius and history genius uh, sides to be able to construct, um, you know, arguments essentially that kids would make and give kids opportunities to be able to engage in, uh, you know, constructive ways as they dispute, uh, you know, what the interpretation is of a set of events. Um, you know, because as we know, like with, with these volatile and 
uh, politically charged moments, you know, they're going to be strong opinions on either side. So it seems like this amazing opportunity, you know, for that as well. I just wanted to add. Yeah, I, Paul, thank you so much for that. I feel like you really get this project, and I, I, I truly appreciate your uh, collaboration and collegiality and, and working together from our various points in this uh, education space. And, and so, uh, go go give your uh, child a bath. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, let's stay in touch. Cause I, I'd like to respond to your points, but I'll let you go first. <laughs> we can hear them later. Great, thanks. Um, go ahead. Yeah. Let me just say that you know Paul hits a couple things on the on the on the head there. Number one, this you know Wikipedia is definitely the number one analog for the project that we have going. We consider ourselves uh, a knowledge project. We think about Wikipedia all the time. <laughs> uh, we are all reading the book about Wikipedia right now. Um, and trying to figure out how to be more like Wikipedia. Um, and we are a knowledge project. We're not a nonprofit. Uh, we're not charging money for what we're doing, but you know the, the inspiration is is as a knowledge project, and the goal is a knowledge project. Um, and let me just say a couple things about that. One, um, you know, this is an opportunity. I've just I was just reading a book on participatory culture and uh, and reading in a participatory culture today. And there was a section on Wikipedia, and you know, Wikimedia, does this all the time, where they invite classrooms, probably mostly college and graduate school classrooms, to edit, to, uh, to edit entries to help them with their knowledge project. Um, that's very much what we would hope that, that, that stu uh, students and teachers would do with our project, uh, by adding knowledge to the Great Gatsby, or adding knowledge to the I Have a Dream speech, or adding knowledge and, and breaking down uh, a, a, an opinion article on Ferguson. Um, and in that sense, you know, contributing to an archive of annotated, contextualized texts that makes the world uh, a better place and, and, and a place that we're all more in discursive and a truly genuine uh, a way about. Um, so that it's very much a Wikipedia project and I think there are Wikipedia class project, Wikipedia-like class projects to be done on the site. The other point that I'll pick up on in terms of the, you know, uh, comparison to Wikipedia is that it is much more transparent who's involved um, and also um, the involvement is more, uh, well, it's gamified. You get points for annotating on the site, and you get messages when people upvote your annotations and interact with your annotations. So it's much more social, it's much more playful than Wikipedia. The kind of editing and, and conversation is a little bit more at the forefront, um, which I think are really great elements for, you know, classroom, for, you know, for visualizing the process in a classroom and talking about the, the act of close reading and talking about the act of collaboration uh, and talking about the act of building knowledge together. Um, you know, all of that is much more at the forefront of the project and built into the user interface in that sense. I have lots to go to, but Joe, I want to give Joe a chance to talk. And yes. Sam, go ahead, yeah. Um. No, my head's swimming. So one, I just asked for my educator access. That was one. Um, and it's I, I'm feeling like Wikipedia plus Youth Voices plus uh, Crocodile like all met and had like a baby, and um, out came lit genius. So I'm get I'm guess I guess I'm trying to figure out. And then what Paul said, where students can look at multiple, in multiple forums, I'm, I'm on Genius right now, so I'm just wrapping my head around it. Mm -hmm. um, that's, like, ultra cool. Like, I can, I can see my students, like, and I guess I just have practical, like, logistical questions, but I want to, I don't want to take up time on this, because I want to read through what's here for Educator Genius, but... Um, yeah, I don't know, Paul and Jeremy and Sam. Like, it, there's a lot. There's so here, yeah, one, yeah. one of the takes. Go ahead, Sam. Yeah, kind of, kind of echoing, but uh, to backtrack even before, like some of those things. I'm, I'm, I'm always curious. Um, as a teacherpreneur kind of person, like, like the, um, like the business model or the social business model, and you know these particularly a lot of online spaces, and so. Um, I, I'd be curious to hear, like, you know, the the business model, if 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 there is such, or the the social engineering model, or whatever model. Yeah. 
no social engineering is going on here. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm but, sorry, uh, so one word, but yeah. Uh, but uh, but I am, uh, you know, as I as I you know have clarified, I'm I'm a humble school teacher, and you know, just happened to have gotten lucky and uh, ended up in this wonderful position of being able to work in this cool startup and work with teachers and in education. So I actually don't really can't speak to the business model, but I'll also just say that it's not something that we talk about every day at the company. We don't talk about monetization. We talk about the knowledge project, and I'm, I'm being completely sincere when I say that, from the founders uh, to the programmers to the folks like me working on the cultural side of site. Obviously, we have investors, so monetization will have to happen. Um, but all of us are deeply, you know, we want to make the Internet a better place, uh, a more understandable place, a more engaged place. We think annotation is a tool for people to connect with each other uh, more, you know, in a better digital, civic way. Um, and that's what we're trying to build. We're focusing on how to hone the tools to make that happen. Um, but, you know, you bring up a point that's important. You know, monetization will have to happen at some point. Uh, we're not a nonprofit like Wikipedia. Um, but I don't have a lot of great answers for you to, uh, to except to say that, like, literally everybody at the company is talking about the knowledge project aspect. Um, and it's sometimes scary how little we're talking about the business model. Cool. Um, so, so a couple of couple of things to clarify. Um, one of the amazing things about Rap Genius and the way it's, um, I I don't know as much as I'm going to say right now, but um, it, it, part of what the site the site has become very important in the hip hop community because the artists themselves have become verified artists. Right? Is that the right word? Yes. Um, so so that's that's a really important aspect and and. You seem to be moving that into literature as well, with the Juno Diaz example and, and others, I think. So That's can right. you explain what that is and how that shows up on the site a little bit? Sure. Um, well, the verify, I mean, first of all, this is a great way to get uh, students engaged with the site, because uh, mm -hmm. you can tell them that some of their favorite rappers like 50 Cent and Vic Mensa and uh, Nas are on the site annotating their own texts. Um, and you can show them how they're doing the same kind of exercise that you're asking uh, th them to do, you know, in, in terms of annotation. Um, but that's, that was a critical part of Rap Genius. You know, you can't have the authoritative archive of uh, hip-hop lyrics without the authors um, engaged in that uh, conversation without the artists themselves. And so they built out a... Um, a uh, Verified artist program where they were recruiting the uh, the artists to annotate their own work and artists love doing this. They love talking about the words. I mean, I still remember seeing Common being interviewed uh, by the site and him just kind of stopping for a second and saying, "Man, this is the best interview. You know, we're talking about the words. We're talking about the poetry. You know, it's none of the the other stuff, the scene or whatever. It's really about the language." And uh, rappers love that. Uh, and Juno Diaz completely nerded out on Brief Wondrous Life of Oscar Wilde just because he's a word nerd, he's a nerd about science fiction, he got to nerd out about it and, and that's what it's all about and so the artists love that and I think that it's a great model for the for the music industry um, in terms of, of promoting content. I mean if Nas is annotating lyrics on a new song it really makes people excited about it. Um, same thing with literature, we're trying to replicate that model within the uh, literary publishing industry by having authors release excerpts of their books annotated as a way to get people excited about the books. Um, but it's all really just about how we engage with these kind of texts through these new tools. Uh, I mean, everybody's searching for lyrics, and if you can search for lyrics in a place where you can have a conversation about their meaning, discover their meaning, share your expertise about their meaning, see what uh, artists are saying about their meaning, same thing with literature. I mean, that's the new experience of, of these kinds of texts in the 21st century. Um, and I think it's just really exciting for everybody involved, from the fans to the authors uh, to ultimately to the publishers and people that, that own that content and want to, uh, you know, uh, promote it and, and sell it ultimately. Joe, have her say hi. Let's <laughs> say hi. Hi. Well, you want to nerd out on Rap Genius and Lit Genius? Yeah. No, thank you, she said. But who's, who's your favorite artist, musical artist? Who do you like to listen to so much on the radio? Um, frozen? Frozen. Oh, yeah, she's still in her frozen phase, so. Okay. 
Well, we've got Let It Go up there, and we've Ooh, got... Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, we've definitely got uh, Let It Go and First Time Forever, all the, all the <laughs> hits from Frozen are up there. <laughs> Very cool. That's awesome. Good That's answer. Awesome. So a, a couple of features that um, about community and, and so forth, but I wanted to uh, say something about the swimming um, that, Joe, you said, um, and all of these different things. And... and Key to key theoretical uh, base for me is James Moffat's teaching the universe of discourse, uh, which is uh, like I think it was published in '68. Um, but uh, the idea that there is a universe of discourse, like there are different kinds of responses to something, um, is always really important to me. So. And, and and I want kids to be playing, this is his language actually, playing the entire, you know, spectrum, <laughs> right? So um, Joe mentioned Crocodile, and that's something where um, we have um, a whole s a collection of student work, or student chosen, but sometimes teacher chosen PDFs that uh, we have built, um, and kids annotate and uh, sometimes annotate together. Um, and then recently, I've been messing around with now comment, um, and um, and what I wanted to say, and that was a really long way to say it, but let me, <laughs> if you don't mind, um, is that it seems to me that if we can use the idea of low stakes, high stakes, like going on, um, going on genius feels higher stakes than um, just going to my own. Although I know you can do some things private, we can talk about that. But going to my own sort of now comment place or my own crocodile place and figuring things out, asking questions, saying like, I don't understand this, what's going on here? Um, whereas, uh, you know, the Wikipedia notion feels a little higher stakes. Like, I, I'm, the idea is to write it in third person, the idea is to, like, contribute knowledge. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Does that distinction make some sense to you? That makes uh, absolute sense, Paul, mm -hmm. and I really appreciate the question. Um, it is higher stakes. Uh, we are trying to build in, and you'll see within the semester's time, uh, features that allow uh, that other level of discourse. Um, it's all still going to be public, but I'd say the diff. I mean, first of all, let me just say, there are private pages on the site. So if you want your own copy of, uh, of uh, yeah. Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet, you can create your own blank version that's just for your class and have and, and organize that conversation however you want with students um, asking questions, students trying ideas, make it much more process oriented, forget about the third person, really guide them to annotate however you want. Um, mm -hmm. Although it will be public in the sense that their classmates will see it. Um, but I do think the stakes are a lot higher in public, but I think that that's important. Mm -hmm. um, because I think that that's what makes us better writers when we're suddenly called to account by larger audiences. I mean, if you're writing a five-page paper for your teacher or one-page essay for your teacher and they're just printing it off and never looking at it and, until you get it back and just then looking at the grade, um, you're not really necessarily improving your writing. But if you think, you know, A, my classmates might read this, B, somebody out there in the internet ether might read this, you might start to come correct with your thinking <laughs> and your writing and the craft of your prose yeah. in ways that you've never been asked to or you know forced to do because of that limited audience um, but I do think that there is a, a pedagogical value in you know certain levels of privacy certain you know levels of uh, extensive reading communities you know the community of the classroom the larger community of the internet um, but I will say that genius is a very amicable place <laughs> Uh, to experiment with ideas. Um, people can be tough on each other, but we're all in this for the love of a knowledge project, so people are also incredibly supportive of each other and trying to build on each other. And if I could just circle back to one other thing, which is that we are trying to build in more informal ways that people can annotate on the, on the site. And I, I don't want to say too much, but within a few months' time, you'll see ways to engage with annotation outside of that encyclopedic third-person voice. That's always going to be part of it, because we want to be Wikipedia line-by-line -line analysis. But soon you'll be able to also have a more Twitter-like um, conversation around annotations, uh, around text as well, that might allow somebody to be more discursive in a, in a question, and maybe ask a question, 
or offer a comment that might be more personal about the reading um, rather than always annotating from this kind of encyclopedic third-person voice. Yeah, so in, in case in point, I'm like, my mind is like uh, thinking about calling, calling back on last year. So me and my students, we read uh, Gwendolyn Brooks' We Real Cool, right? Mm -hmm. And we had this really rich, I had them do a close reading and a model for them, and we were talking about like, the re real cool is really not about being cool. It's actually about young men, and I use my, the young men in my school particularly. Uh, they operate. They're fearful, and so you act cool because you're scared. And like I could see us like having like a really dynamic, you know, conversation with Gwendolyn Brooks' really short poem with the, you know this powerful short poem, and it would be really powerful. And so I'm just playing that in my head. But no. yeah. One thing you can do, Sam, now, and I'm actually in the process of educatorizing your account as we speak, because I just saw you had commented on, saw you upvoted one of my uh, comments on We Real Cool. So just in terms of how the site works, and Joe, by the way, anytime you want to hop on a one-on-one -on -one conversation like this on phone or video to walk through the site and answer some of your more logistical questions, happy to do that, happy to do that for anybody listening. But I had the site open while we're talking, and I got a notification that Sam upvoted um, one of my annotations on We Real Cool. And this is how the site works, always bringing people back to the text. You know, this is going to make me want to go see what did Sam like and go back to that annotation. Maybe Sam had offered something more critical and a comment on the annotation, and I might go and check out, you know, do I agree with him? Do I want to incorporate his ideas um, or start a conversation with him about that line? But Sam, now that you have educator privileges, you can create a private version of We Real Cool um, in the admin button in the upper left-hand corner of that page, and it will be a private version of, the, of, that, of that text, of that Gwendolyn Brooks poem, for annotation by you and your students without any previous annotations, and then you can have that conversation. You can go and talk about all the real-life things that you might be bringing to bear from those students' experiences on that text that, at least right now, might not be that appropriate on the public version uh, of the site, uh, of that of that text, just because it's so oriented around uh, that third person analysis of the poem. But you how, can do that tomorrow in class. How does how do his students find that private version? Okay, so um, first of all, once if he goes ahead through the process of creating that private version, um, right. he'll get to a link that he can then share with students directly, and they'll go to that. When I say okay. private, it's not private in the sense you have to have a special login. It's like a YouTube video that if you share the link, people have access. Okay. So nobody could search it. But the other thing that will happen is that he'll have a Sam Reed the Third uh, teacher page that gets automatically created as soon as he creates uh, that poem's text. And then every time he creates a class page, it'll go to his Sam Reed the Third teacher page, and he can share that with a class and say all the genius text that we're looking at here, whether it's Jay Z or Tony Morrison or Gwendolyn Brooks or an article on Ferguson, you can find it all here. So there's kind of a home base. Um, so you can also create another a for your course. Yeah. So if you're teaching, a, say you're teaching a, let's see, you know, History 9 course, you, uh, you can say History 9, Santa Bernardino High or whatever, uh, you know, Mr. Dean's course or whatever, you can create a tag for it and then you'll have a tag page where all those texts are Gathered. So I can I can be happy to walk people through with uh, at any point. I'm 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 almost there, but yeah. I and so one of the uh, in terms of this. Oh, sorry. So I've made my quote unquote private version of something, um, and then I can still create a tag for that private version. So so for example, Joe's. Uh, I'm, I want to look at it from a student's point of view, right? Yep. Yeah. Student finds something um, they want to. They they want to, you know, have a blank version. They they make their own blank version. Can they create a tag? Called, let's say Youth Voices. So, and, and I've already created that tag, and there's already stuff on the Youth Voices page, so that my students in in the Bronx can find that. So, once what's you've the best way to go? Yeah. Once you've created a Youth Voices tag. Yeah. Anybody can add that Youth Voices tag. So students could use that Youth Voices tag. But let me uh, stop for a second and, point, and just make a, 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 uh, an important point about 
how a teacher organizes on the site. And again, mm -hmm. we are a high-touch customer service department here at uh, Education Genius, so we're always happy to help walk a teacher through things, get on the phone, respond to emails. You'll get the help you need to, to get everything organized and, and make it clear for your students. But if you're working on public pages, you want to use a tagging system. If you're working mm -hmm. on private pages, you're going to want to use that teacher page. And they really don't work that well together because okay. We, the tag pages are public, answer, yeah. and so for private pages, we don't want them to show up anywhere, um, so they're not going to show up on the way that we have the tag pages set up. Um, so, so could I jump in and say, Joe, so I, I feel like, and Sam, if you join us too, that's great, I feel like we want to use the Youth Voices tag as much as possible and keep yeah. things public as much as possible, but just, I, just No, I thought. agree, but, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I, I would say... See how that works, I like the idea of having the teacher page uh, because I, I'm just thinking like scaffolding wise then you know I need our, just like we did with Youth Voices the kids need to comment a lot before they can actually yeah, have their all that, yeah. session right like I can this would be very this that is very helpful to know that distinction Jeremy because yeah. so the rest of September and October we're on my teacher page then we're shifting into working with yeah, yeah. You know, and doing it in small bursts, like small groups trying it first, yeah. And you can create three, ver four versions of the We Real Cool poem for four different groups, private pages, for, you know, on your teacher page for, you know, group A, group B, group C, group D, have them work in small groups. Then next time you do a Langston Hughes poem, the whole class works together. Then you do like a, you know, Toni Morrison story, and you do it with youth voices across the country. So there's a lot of different ways to engage different levels of community, private, public. It can get a little confusing uh, in terms of how to organize this stuff, but like I said, we're here. And we're also responsive to, to want to make the tools uh, for annotation, but also for organization of content better. Um, and I'll just add one more way that you can organize content is by adding a text to an album. So you could have, an, you know, again, we started as a music site. So you could have Youth Voices tag but within Youth Voices, you could also have uh, albums. You could have, you know, the Ferguson album. You could have the, you know, African American poetry album. Um, and those would function That's as great little idea. Yeah, yeah. unit organizational spaces. Um, mm -hmm. And we see people using that kind of album function. I think they call it a collection now, not an album, because we're trying to move away from the music language that the site originated with. But it's essentially making a mixtape of a group of texts. Um, that you can then find a mixtape page for that functions like a unit, and that mixtape could have you know be organized thematically or or you know generically however you chose. Right, and and another feature I think is really worth mentioning because I used it right away, um, and and you can I used it on a a mission of, around Swampy Cree naming poems, um, so I put up I put up these Swampy Cree naming poems. Um, on Genius, and then put them into a collection. And, but then the, the feature that I wanted to emphasize was the embed feature. I then took the embed for each of the poems after I did some annotations around them and put them back onto Youth Voices. So if you go to youthvoices.net slash naming poems, you can see how the embed looks on there. Um, and then, you know, so. And one of the things that, that I'm always looking at, because we're all about blended learning, asynchronous learning, um, trying to figure out how to give kids, look, you know, here are these three poems for middle school kids they are pretty tough to, to understand. I can sit down and have a conversation. I can, have, I can set up peers to, to have a conversation, but how do I deal with the kid who's, you know, just come in <laughs> on Thursday and we did that three weeks ago? So fi figuring out a way to, to wrap those poems in, in other kinds of conversations is, is, is one of the things that that tool can do, too. I don't know if that was clear, but I'm, I'm babbling on. I, I, I got I to warn um, you and everybody who might be listening to this, <laughs> it's a good warning, that you do lose time on this site. <laughs> you, you're like... <laughs> you're like you look up, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I was supposed to put the announcement for this show up, like, you know, my goal is to get it up about uh, 8 o'clock, and, uh, you know, as I look up 10 o'clock, wait, what have I been doing here? But <laughs> so that's a good thing. 
Yeah, and uh, okay. so Jeremy, it's it's pretty it's pretty international as well because I was looking at um some of the annotations with like the foreign languages, and so I know my kids might be um in, real intrigued by that. But yeah, talk about the international um uh sure. presence. Sure. Yeah. Uh, first, let me just respond to something Paul said, which is losing time on the site. I mean, yeah, man, that's what it's built for. You can't, I can't tell you how many times I came home from the coffee shop when I was supposed to be working on my dissertation, and my wife said, how'd it go? And I, got, I was like, oh, spent the whole day on Rap Genius. You know, I didn't, I didn't write a word of my dissertation. Um, which you do now have, by the way. Just I, do, I did finish it, yeah, but uh, fortunately it worked out for me to, to end up actually getting a job, so actually I was technically working then, but it's a rabbit hole. Uh, you go down a rabbit hole, you, you, you go to this text, it takes you to that text, you move from Ferguson to a hip-hop song to a poem, you know, back to some news story, and it's it's an amazing, a wonderful place, I think, to lose time, but you do lose time. Um, and, and Jeremy, I had a perfect time to mention, and we haven't mentioned it yet, that all of it gets collected on your profile page, which yeah. becomes a portfolio for the students, right? That's that's yeah. right, yeah, you, you, have a pro, you have a profile and your students will have a profile, so rather than digging through chapter one of The Great Gatsby, you can go to student A's page and see what they've contributed to, and you'll see if they ended up on some random page, if they're a Beatles fan and they ended up annotating a bunch of Beatles, <laughs> if they're using the same account. But, um, and I think that's really neat, because it's, kind of, it's, a, it's a place where their work on the site gets co uh, collected as a, as, a, as a portfolio, as you said, and I think it's something you can curate and be proud of, um, and a teacher can also monitor and assess. But uh, to respond to Sam's question, yeah, this is an international movement. Um, a few things to say there. There are genius communities all over the world. France and Germany are especially big. They started off as hip-hop communities for those countries and those languages, um, but they've expanded now as the site has expanded to other content areas. So there's a lit genius France. Um, Poland is pretty big, too. Uh, but the other cool thing about the site is that when you add a text, you can add any, any alphabet. So we have Arabic text on the site. We have Chinese language text on the site, Georgian uh, language uh, alphabet text on the site, Cyrillic on the site. And it all looks really great on the black background. Ancient Greek is on the site uh, as well. And so foreign language teachers can use it to annotate, you know, in... Uh, foreign language Hebrew is also uh, looks really great on the site, <laughs> um, but we do have organic, you know, international communities that are working on annotating, uh, you know, French poetry and, and French hip hop, um, and they're getting they're getting quite big, and we want you know to nurture those communities, and we're uh, you know working with representatives in different areas to try to build those communities, uh, help them build, and uh, you know, provide them with the resources to to grow. Uh, quibble. <laughs> um, I, you and I uh, talked earlier uh, before the show last night about how in New York City schools uh, YouTube and SoundCloud are blocked. Is there any other way to in our schools? Is there any other way to get audio or video from other services or other ways embedded? Or is that on the development list or? <laughs> Um, can you, sorry, can you repeat the question? So, so I'm just, like, like, um, uh, there are others, well, let's, YouTube is blocked, right? So, so when, when somebody's put up a YouTube on, um, Genius, it just, it, it, there's just a blank spot there <laughs> in, in my school, right? right? And same, same thing with SoundCloud, there's some amazing stuff up with SoundCloud, um, but we can't listen to it inside my school. So I was just wondering if there are any other ways to embed audio and video rather than those two sources. Um, we do have Spotify embeds uh, on the on the on the on the on the text. Um, I think you know a lot. Most of these things they embed automatically. So I, I can't remember if Vimeo embeds perfectly. It may not actually because I think they have some proprietary issues. Okay. Um, but that was one uh, of the questions. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that that's a question you have to take up with the DOE. I mean, I think it's really unfortunate that uh, yeah, SoundCloud especially, but YouTube as well. I mean, these are valuable resources, and of course, there's bad, you know, um, ex explicit content. I suppose that can be accessed there, but um, 
I just think that that's short-sighted in terms of, and, and really handicapping folks in terms of the kind of valuable resources, especially, I mean, there's so much educational stuff on YouTube to block that entirely is, is kind of absurd. And, um, and also blocks creativity because, of course, I can create wonderful, I can do audio readings and upload them to SoundCloud. If I can't use them in my blog that I'm writing for a class, I feel like I'm really, you know, uh, yeah, yeah inter interesting today in our in our staff development, we were talking about how uh, certain locations are blocking things where other places are like having access. So it's like becoming ghettoized in terms of accessibility of like you know content resources where YouTube may not be blocked in a suburban you know more affluent school, but then it's going to be blocked in a Philly or a New York school public neighborhood public school, and this is just not fair because. I mean, you have to develop trusting uh, cultures that allow kids and teachers to, um, you know. So, yeah, I mean, Sam, I'm glad you said it that way. That's interesting. I just, just a detail in New York City, at least, and it's maybe true elsewhere as well. You know, we're, we're a tiny school in a big old building that has seven other schools in it. So it, it would be possible, and my principal would certainly support opening that stuff up. But he has to have the conversation with the seven other principals before it could happen, um, right? So it's just a, it, bec it just be yeah, it's not a philosophical thing; it's a bureaucratic thing. And right. Sam, what you just said kind of uh, links into that really in an interesting ways. And and in so yeah, far, yeah. you know, part of our responsibility now is teach in teaching writing in the twenty first century and, and teaching as it sounds like Joe and and Paul are are, are doing in the in the Bay Area. Um, kind of civic engagement and digital engagement, you know, we have to teach responsibility about this stuff, uh, not censor it, but teach people to teach young people to be responsible about it. Um, mm -hmm. And if we don't have access to it, then we can't teach them how to navigate that world responsibly, ethically, intelligently, um, you know, because that's what it's about. Otherwise, they, they you know, they'll grow up to be uh, poor commentators on YouTube unless we teach them how to find the good stuff on how to be smart about engaging that stuff. Yep. yep. All right. We should. Uh, we started a little bit late, and we're going late. So I appreciate you hanging in here, um, Jeremy. Uh, let's. We can ask this publicly. Uh, your email, if somebody wants to contact you. <laughs> sure, Jeremy at genius uh, dot com. All right. And um, J Joe, this is like happening again. But here's. My proposal for us to follow, what's happening is I keep wanting to like use these tools to connect our kids, and and we can't. Yeah. But 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 let's see. Like I mean, if let's see if we can find. My proposal is we find a text, right? We we do some messing around with it. Uh, the students do, and then they come to a conversation like this on a hangout together. Um, and yeah. then we then we can kind of publish that all together back on um, okay. so back on genius so um, yeah let's talk um, okay. back channel and so forth great <laughs> Jeremy you have any last thoughts you want to leave us with what I, there are things we didn't get to and anyway and you must be excited because a lot of these tools for teachers didn't exist even a year ago is that correct so uh, that's right. Excited. A lot of this stuff didn't exist. I'm really, uh, you know, excited that they that they do now. I think History Genius, for example, didn't exist even just a few months ago. So we have these new content communities on the site to make history teachers feel at home. This stuff is new, uh, new, and so we're excited to see new teachers, history, social studies teachers, even science teachers, um, start to use the site. But uh, this has just been an amazing conversation. I think the work you guys are doing is amazing, and uh, I, I'd love to be a part and support however I can. Uh, I really appreciate you know having the time to talk about my project, and look forward to following up with people, uh, you know, one on one to walk you through the site and to support the projects like you're talking about, Paul and Joe. Uh, help you get it off the ground. Make sure you uh, have everything set up the way you want to, and eventually hear from the students on the site. You know, that's the best part is when the students' voices start coming in and we see them getting engaged. Um, that's obviously what makes it worthwhile. Very cool. Thank you so much. Um, good night. We want to say <laughs> here in a second. Um, I did Joe, we did, we're short enough. We could get last comments from, from Joe and Sam, though. <laughs> Sometimes that gets very long at the end. But <laughs> Any last thoughts, Joe? 
No, I mean, I'm just like, I'm going to see how I can try this next week. That's all. <laughs> what, what do I need to do to try this next week? Yeah. <laughs> so we've got an educator so, account, and anybody that that's listening out there that doesn't have, uh, hasn't signed up yet, go ahead and sign up and send me your username that you choose, and I'll educatorize your account, and you can uh, get going tomorrow or next week. Awesome. So just yeah. just a qu uh, Joe, one one idea about the merging, and I implied this earlier, but let's say I write a poem or even a story or whatever on Youth Voices. I can take that text, put it up in Genius, and then get the embed code and put it back on Youth Voices, right? And then you know, so there there are ways to mix that are pretty magical. I think wonderful. Um, Sam, any last thoughts? Uh, no, I want to. I want to play around with it, and um, you know, let put it in front of my kids. You know, excited about that. You start with Kids Monday, yeah. I start with Kids Monday, um, but you know, we're going to work on building culture and other kind of things. So I may, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah a little teaser. Of this, yeah. <laughs> no, but I'm I'm excited. I'll play around with it, and I'm going to do so. Obviously, do a do a bunch of sharing with, with my teacher networks and as well as well. You you got you guys have ninth graders coming in, just yeah. or just ninth graders. Yeah, just okay. ninth just ninth graders. Mm -hmm. Hundred and fifteen kids. How many? Hundred and fifteen. Wow, that's a big start. Yeah. Okay. Nice. All right. Um, thank you all. Um, we're here every Wednesday night um, at edtechtalk.com, which is a channel of the World Bridges Network that. Um, <laughs> Dave Cormier and Jeff Lebo started uh, eight or nine years ago. Um, thank you all, and uh, good night. All right, thanks a lot.